Welcome to Data Science 1, Probability 1. We're going to talk about beginnings of probability and how to understand it in a reasonable manner. All right, so if we're going to understand data science, we need to understand how data arises. Now, there's lots of ways data arise, but there's typical types of data that we see. Uh, so we have an experiment or something that elicits a response from the system we're considering. And experiment is a really, really widely defined term here. It's, it's really broad. Um, so an experiment could be a controlled study, and you're in a controlled environment where the researcher goes in, intervenes, applies some treatment to a subject or the system, and observes the response or outcome from that intervention. And this is considered an experimental study, and that's usually what people think of when they're thinking of an experiment. But another experiment we could do is just have an uncontrolled environment where the researcher simply observes the behavior and records a response without any intervention into the system. So this is considered an observational study. Now, from a statistics standpoint, the reason we want to know about probability is we want to know whether the response that we see is rare or common. If it's really rare, then maybe something significant is going on in the sense that it's not what we expected. Okay, so let's consider uh, some simple examples that will hopefully make this really, really easy for you to understand before we get into the heavy math later. All right, so let's watch this video where Lionel Messi is attempting to score a goal. Okay, now notice that I stopped it right before he either scored the goal or didn't. Okay, so since we haven't seen the outcome yet, we don't know what happens, and hence we're uncertain about the outcome. And this is the idea of probability. We don't want to just think about one thing. We want to think about what all could have occurred. So probability attempts to understand the uncertainty associated with an experiment. Uh, so when I say uncertainty, you can also think about that as being also likelihood or unlikeliness of something happening. Uh, it just doesn't consider one outcome, and it tries to consider all the possible outcomes of the experiment that we're interested in. Okay, So just keep that in mind, as we'll see here in a little bit. It also assigns how likely each outcome is or the possible outcomes are to occur, and that will help us determine whether they're rare or common. And since it considers all possible outcomes at once, many people consider it to be abstract and theoretical, and I will say that it absolutely is. So that's why I'm going to try to ease you into it via these examples. For example, with Lionel Messi. We don't know what happened unless you've seen that game. Then you, maybe you do know what happened. But the point is, is we don't know what happens, and that is what probability is about. Okay, so... Back to our idea from Lionel Messi is he's trying to score a goal. What are the possible outcomes? Yeah, there are lots of possible outcomes, but what are we interested in? We're interested in whether he makes the goal or not. Okay, we're not really interested in whether he got called in a foul, whether he, you know, slid and got a burn from the grass. Uh, he's not interested in whether he bumped into somebody. I mean, those are possible outcomes. But which one are we interested in? We're interested in whether he made the goal or not. So the collection of all possible outcomes from the experiment that we're interested in, okay, so uh, the experiment is focused in on specific outcomes that we're interested in. In this case, goal or not, the sample space here we're going to denote with the script S, and we can just write out what the sample space is. And in this case, it's going to be the set of outcomes, goal or no goal. Okay, that's it. We're not interested in any other, other possible uh, uh, possibilities of what might have occurred. All right, here's a different example that maybe is a little bit further out. Now, this fisherman is going to throw his net out, and he's going to retrieve it. But notice, I've stopped the video before he pulled the, vi the, the net all the way in, so we don't know what the outcome is. We want to understand what the outcomes could be. That way we can determine whether they're likely or not. Okay, so in this case, what are the possible outcomes? Well, he could catch one fish right? Or he could catch two fish, or he could catch three fish in that net, four fish. Now, notice I'm assigning them numbers, but I really shouldn't be, because this is what happened. Fish, fishes, more fishes, more fishes, more fishes, okay? So here it's difficult to write out S directly in terms of 
goal or no goal because we need a way to think about this that's a little bit easier. And this is where this idea of a random variable comes in. So a random variable is a function that assigns outcomes in S to real valued numbers. Okay, and you'll see what it means here in just a second. So I usually tell people, think of the random variable as the scale that measures the outcome. When they hear the word random variable, they think, oh, I'm just thinking some random quantity that I wish to measure. No, here it's the scale that's going to measure it. And the random part is, is we don't know what the outcome is. So it's random because S is random and it came from an experiment. Uh, some random variables are very natural and easy to understand. So if Lionel Messi t makes the goal and he scores one point, otherwise he scores zero points, right? So it's real easy to assign a number to those outcomes. So it's a one if he scores a goal, it's zero otherwise. Now, what about the fish version? That's a little more difficult to understand because x could be the number of fish that he caught or x could be the weight of the fish that he caught or x could be the value of fish at market and this may or may not be directly related to the above due to price negotiation so it's you really need to be aware of what you're trying to measure okay if it's the number of fish then say hey then i'm i'm going to pay attention to the number of fish but the weight of the fish is a very different type of measurement. Yes, it's related to the number of fish, but it's not like a simple count. All right, so before we move on, hopefully this gives you some idea of what we're trying to talk about. The idea of a random, a random variable that measures the outcome in a sample space. And we can start looking at this more in depth. And in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to Pay attention to what are called discrete random variables and look at the sample space there. And then we'll start talking about how to assign probabilities after that. All right. See you in the next video.